Jeff from Two Hacks Garage. Well, the time has finally come. We finally located um, the push rods that we need. Um, Jimmy got one of the sets in directly from Howard's and he's already got those installed. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the other push rods that we got in, because as you saw in the other video, they were actually two different lengths. Um, I am running a hydro hydraulic flat tappet camshaft and with that, there is considered what you'd want to call lash, but it's more not like the valve lash that you would have for like a solid. Um, with the solid, it, it is a lot more adjustment um, because if it's too tight, you're going to have your valves opening almost at the same time, have too much overlap and have them stay open, which is no good. So with a, on a hydraulic flat tappet cam, you actually want to adjust lift or preload. And how to do that, we're going to walk through that, but what's important is um, you really do need the instructions from your rocker arm manufacturer on how to set that. They're pretty much all the same, but with these, we're actually going to go through and we're actually going to follow those instructions. Right now, all Jamie's doing is he's putting a little oil pretty much on everything down in the actual lifter itself, on the push rods, on the rocker shafts, everything. That's just to help get things lubed before this thing is fired up. It is a new motor. It's just one of those preventative tips that go in there. So this isn't a video where we're going to adjust lash on a solid. We're going to show how to do preload on the hydraulic flat tappet system. So with that, what I'm going to do is we're going to get started on that. And here we go. We're going to rotate the engine until the cam pushes the valve or the lifter up. And we wrote we, on a Ford, it's simple. It's got big holes in the valley so you can see it. Um, we want it on the heel of the camshaft with the lifter closed. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to get one started here. And uh, There's another formula you can use, but it's real simple to do it this way, especially when you can see the dumb thing. Okay, right now the lifter is completely down. It's on the heel of the cam. What I do is I'm just, I just feel it. You feel it to where it just starts to tighten. Then you move the valve up or the lift rocker arm up and down to make sure that there is no clearance there. Then sometimes you back it off to feel a little and then just double check yourself. From that point on, everything is pretty much a quarter turn. That's it. Pretty simple. So what he basically did there was he, he made sure the roller was on the tip of this, where it was, you know, kind of snug, but not, you know, still had a little bit of free play. And, you know, it it's also shows within the manufacturer's um, suggested adjustment recommendations. And all he did was take that down and get it where he wanted to go and go a quarter turn. So that's actually setting the preload on these hydraulic lifters. And from there, he's going to hold that. E even though these are anti-pump-up lifters, they still there's a certain sequence if you can get them too tight you can put too much pressure on the cam and then it will rub the bump off the camshaft and that is definitely not a good thing no so jimmy's going in and what he's doing is he's just holding uh, the keeper here in place with that and there's a lock nut which you can see right in here set screw. that set screw it sets everything into place so we'll go on to the the next one So now he's got it on the heel of the cam itself, and he's just feeling for tension on that. See if I can get a better angle here for you. Now sometimes when you put these together, you can actually push them. Like right now, I'm pushing the inside of the lifter down. Some do it, some don't. It just depends on how much oil was in it when they assemble them at the factory. So that's what you do, you wanna be careful you don't wind this too far down and shove the lifter, the inside of the lifter down. You just want to make sure that it's just there in like a neutral position. 
Then you put the quarter turn on it. Come back. Tighten. Now you may have to adjust these again. If any of them's pecking or ticking, they call it, when it's running, you have to just which one it is or determine which one it is and then make it uh, tighten it up until the ticking goes away so so far so good so real quick Jamie I do have a question on this some people might ask is there actually a torque spec that you need to have on these not that I know of. Okay. I've never seen one. And per the manufacturer's suggested that one? Because that set screw is just a jam screw yep. to, to keep the nut from vibrating loose. Okay, so it does say in here that there is no um, torque spec on that. So it's just basically getting that tight where it's, it's by feel. Um, the one thing it does say in here on this, um, if it is an aftermarket cam and lifters, follow the manufacturer's preload instructions. Well, we do have the Howards on that, and we're following that. But it does say, do, no, do not go back and check your adjustment as it will seem loose due to lift or bleed down. That's what Jimmy just explained when he was moving the rocker back and forth and pushing that down. Um, so basically, you go through this, um, and we'll watch a couple more. But what you're basically doing is going through, and you're putting it on the heel of the cam. Um, you're getting that so the feel is just snug and then you do your quarter turn and tighten down your and lock. if you're watching the inside of the lifter when you tighten this up you can see if you're running the adjust nut too far down especially if the lifter moves that's too much so what we'll try to do here on the next one is i'll try to get a, a, a video of you know what he's explaining on the lifter there Back this off. Hit this one again. Have my wrench in the wrong spot. It doesn't work when you're working with a bent wrench, neither. You just kind of have to just determine what's a quarter turn. But this also is pretty much good for stock lifters, too, like stock small block Chevys, big block Chevys, anything that has an independently adjustable uh, lifter. Now, if they're shaft mounted, that all has to do with the valve stem height. Valve stem height, we don't have to worry about on this engine too much other than we have to make sure the valve the retainer, or uh, retainer valve spring height is right, which we've already checked and done. So what we're gonna do on this one here then, is we're gonna get a little bit of a closer look at what Jenny's doing. Um, with that and you can see how everything's moving now so he's just going around and he's going to put it on the heel of the cam again so as it's you know somewhat of a timely process it's actually not that bad each one follows the same step and you just want to you know make sure it is on the heel of the cam so as you can see here he's just going by feel so if you look right there it does have a little little wiggle this way is fine but this way up and down is what you're worried about sideways it's always going to do that so if you can see here, it's not having, it's not having the uh, non-contact. There's no gap in between there. And there's also, it's not so tight where it's pushing that down, or as Jimmy said, going the other way and pushing the push rod down into the lifter. Trying to make sure my wrench is pretty much straight out. Quarter turn. Hold the nut so the, when I turn the set screw, it doesn't turn the adjusting nut. You'll feel it when it bottoms out against the stud. Should do it. All right, well, so there you go. There's the process on how to do that. And we'll just go through the rest of them pretty much in my old-fashioned time lapse. Um, what I do want to show real quick is what he is talking about um, when he's, he's talking about the actual movement of that. So if you look down in here, if that was, if you're cranking down on that, you'll see how that pushes. You can keep an eye on that. So that's that bleed down with that. So when you're tightening this here by hand and you just want to make sure it's snug and then do your quarter turn so you don't want to prematurely push that down. So always keep an eye on that 
that you're not going to do that. So with that, we're just going to time lapse the rest. Hope you learned something, and we'll just have a follow up at the end. See you guys in a few. quick what we did want to show you is when we're talking about putting this thing on the heel of the cam and basically what we're referring to is right in here so you can see the lifter right you see that and there's the cam the heel is the bottom of the cam not the actual cam lobe that pushes everything up so on this last one we're going to actually turn this thing and go through it but here, here's a good thing jimmy's got He's actually got a camshaft. It's the, the lobe of the cam be the top. We're waiting for it to push the lifter all the way up. You rotate the engine until it's down here. And you can't see it totally, but you can pretty well guess where it's at. And that's what we want. That's what they're searching for. That would be the heel of the cam. So that's a good explanation on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll this over. I'm going to get a nice view of that and see if I can steady this thing so you can actually see it in there right now so I'm going to go ahead and turn this Jimmy's going to keep an eye on it because I'm on the front of the motor and I can't see it okay it's closing somewhere about right there right there yep okay. should do it so, if you look, we are now on the heel of the cam. So with that, we're going to go through the steps again of what Jimmy showed us. And this is our last one. It doesn't really take a whole lot of time. Like it's, it's timely in the sense of you're doing every single one. But to do all 16 of these, you could probably bank on 45 minutes to an hour. Um, as Jimmy did say, after we get this started, if it does start, you know, making that uh, pecking sound, yeah, pecking sound and all that, you'll know it. You'll especially if you're around any mechanical lifters, you'll hear it tapping, and then you need to go back and adjust it. So right now, he's going to go ahead and tighten that down. But also, the opposite end of that scale is if the you get the tapping sound, or you get one that's pumped up too much. And you have a cylinder that's just constantly missing, you're going to have to figure out which one it is and back that off, let it make a pecking sound, then readjust it while it's running, and then the lifter will balance itself out, and then the miss will go away. Because if you have it too tight, that means you've got the inner plunger of the lifter squished down too far. So there's a little bit more knowledge from Jimmy, many years of experience, and many years of trial and error so you know with that what i'm going to do is just come around here and oh, oh and by the way here in illinois we went from uh what would you say jimmy frost warnings to a little bit of 40s and 50s to 90 degree weather yeah a week ago we had frost a week ago today i think or, or at least one day last week yeah so that's it guys that's how uh, you're setting preload on your hydraulic flat tappet cam lifters with the roller rocker setup. Um, like I said, you know, we did have a little bit of moments last week where we had to find the, the actual push rods, had a little problems with that, found another set, got those in. Um, during this week, Jimmy got the other ones in. So you got to see us do the other half on there. It's gonna be the same on the intake as it is on the exhaust. Um, like I said, this is for the hydraulic flat tappet style. And always also look at your manufacturer's sheet. They're always gonna have something in there that's gonna tell you what you need to do to adjust them, put them into place, and also in some cases refer to your cam, uh, your cam card. They should have specs on that too. So with that, that's this video, and uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys soon, and we'll be back with the next video here pretty quick, and it's going to be on the intake manifold. See ya.